something else. And when they said, what's his name? I went, Ryan. And I went, as Ryan came out of my mouth, I thought, I don't like the name Ryan. Why am I naming this child Ryan? That isn't what I was thinking. Well, I later found out the meaning of Ryan, a little king. Ooh. And my son was destined to be a king and is a king. God has that name. You're, you were named what you are for a purpose. But you know what else he does? He has nicknames for you. He does. He has nicknames that he calls you by. And he goes, not only is your name Connor, but I call you this too. Not only are you Samantha, but you are a warrior. And this morning what the Lord said to me was, I want to give each one of the kids this morning a nickname. I want to talk to them about who they are and what I call them. When I see their face and when I look into their eyes, I call them this. And also, adults, he said he wanted to do it for all of you this morning too. Oh, yeah. He wants to give you a nickname this morning. He wants to know what he says when he says your name, what he tags on to it. Now, before we do this, he gave me a very specific word for all of the girls. So girls, will you stand? Just the girls. I'll do you guys afterwards. I need you to look at me. I want to see your eyes. The Lord told me that he calls you a warrior princess. You are a warrior. You are called to take Torian territory. You are called to fight battles where nobody else can fight. And he's called you a princess. Because you are a warrior. Oh no, a princess is amazing. A warrior princess. I want you to look up in the Bible and learn about some warrior princesses and what they did for Jesus. You are called to be all the beauty that is in a princess, all the royalty that is in a princess, but you are called to take that sword and to fight with that sword and to take territory where no one else can take territory. A warrior princess, I call it today. You'll sit down. Boys, will you stand? All the boys. I want to look into your eyes, and I know that's not cool, boys don't look into eyes, but I want you to look into my eyes today, and I want you to know that God has called you to have a tender heart, where the world says that boys need to be really tough and have it like this and stand up. What he recognizes in you is your heart, and he has called you to be like David. David understood his heart. He understood the power of his heart. And he understood that it was okay to be tender. And in his tenderness, he could conquer everything. In his tenderness is where he became cool. Because as, as guys, you want to be really cool. Really tough. But Jesus is saying to you this morning, the Father is saying to you, I call you to be a tender man. A man that has a heart and that you will change nations. I want you to hear this. You are going to change nations, which first starts with your schools, which starts with your neighborhood. And you will change things by your tenderness, by your heart, by what you feel will change your world. See, you're a warrior. You're a tender warrior. A tender warrior. This isn't a wimpy word. This is only given to the select. This is what. You know, I have a really good friend who is, uh, he's like, was a Navy SEAL. He does all the things that nobody else does, the most secret of secretive things in the government. He is the biggest teddy bear I have ever met. And boy, he just loves people with his heart. God has called you to be a tender warrior. And some of you, what is your name? I'm sorry, what? 
Christian. Well, Christian, I have been watching you. Christopher, see? You can't even get your names right, but God knows your name. I may not, but God does. Christopher, what's in here is amazing. And I've been watching that all week. You have so much love inside of you. And I'm not sure that it's always been encouraged to come out. But the love that's inside of you, that Jesus love inside of you, is going to bring lots into the kingdom of God. Don't let anybody tell you not to let that happen. Don't let anybody tell you that it's not cool. Because it's really cool. Amen? What a precious spirit. What a precious spirit. Okay. As we go back into worship, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you to really listen. I'm going to ask you to look with your eyes. You may need to close your eyes and God's going to write a word and you're just going to see it. And by the time worship is over with, I believe God's going to show you one word. And he says, when I say your name, I say this too. When I say see you, I say this and this. Last night I met little Gracie. Gracie asked me what my name was. And I told her what my name was. And then she goes, my name is Princess Gracie. She knows who she is. What is God saying to you? I want you to write it down today so that you never forget what it is. Now, one last thing before we go back into worship. Look at me. When I started talking this morning, some of you, right away when I said God has a good name for you, he has something good he calls you, all you could think about were ugly names. Some of you in here, what came to mind was loser. Not wanted. Can't do anything right. Ugly, stupid. Those were the words, and even some far, far worse that I would never repeat, came to mind. Those are a lie from the enemy. And if you need to take those words literally out of your head tonight, this morning, and put them down and stamp on them and say, no way, that's a lie from hell. My God calls me this. You need to do that today. Some of you need to take it out. In fact, I'm going to add. Does that 